show about sports by people who love sports. Welcome to Sports Isolated. Here's your host, Callum Duck. Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sports Isolated. I'm your host, Callum Dunk. Today on the show, we're going to be chatting with Bowls Australia Participation and Programs Manager, Jimmy Wilson. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Sports Isolated. I'm your host, Callum Dunk. Today we've got Participation and Programs Manager from Bowls Australia, Jimmy Wilson. Jimmy, how are you, mate? Yeah, well, thank you yourself. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Obviously, we're maintaining our uh, social distancing in this video, so uh, Jimmy, do you mind telling us about uh, your career pathway and how you ended up at Bowls Australia? Yeah, Cal, yeah, cheers, mate. Uh, so it all started about 10 years ago. I got my first gig as an under 18 water boy at Norwood Footy Club. So uh, yeah, I was bringing in the big bucks that I couldn't drive yet. So mum was driving me to and from the uh, the games there, which is really good. And I did that for a couple of years and then uh, lucky enough to get a spot down at South Adelaide Footy Club uh, doing some team management for the under 13 development squad. And, uh, I guess it just sort of went from there. My love for sport uh, developed under uh, Warren Plungers down there. He was the yeah. development officer, or was I? Yeah, yeah legend of the fella. So I um, owe him big time and Sharpie down there as well. Gave yeah. him the opportunity. So that sort of developed his under 14, under 15, bit of coaching, and then a lot of horse kick stuff through them. And then went into everything from media to events to all that sort of stuff. Um, and obviously met you through the uh, Bachelor of Health, Health, Health and Activity, B Shaka. Yeah. Uh, down at Flinders, so that was um, that was really good. And uh, yeah. I guess after my trip to the UK for cricket, I uh, come back and I moved my studies in 2017 online to Swinburne online to focus on sports management. Uh, and then I took on a role with BLK Sport, based here in Adelaide, doing all things SA apparel wise. Um, I looked after things like the SAC and the Adelaide Bar and lots of local different places. Um, and I took a little bit of sabbatical from sport for a few months and went into disability employment last year. Uh, and I did a couple of weeks with Swimming Australia looking after their Olympic trial uh, top events uh, and then went into the role with Bolt Australia in September of last year so I'm sitting about seven months into the role now. Yeah, that, that's good to hear. It's, uh, it's obviously great for people like us who have gone to, to uni to share our experience about you know where we've gone and what our pathway's been because I know the, the sports industry is going to grow by 20% by the year 2030 so um, Obviously, there's, there's going to be more employment opportunities and obviously more people who are looking to get involved in the sports industry because I feel like it's a very rewarding place to be and, a, and it's a great career because you, you know, obviously help a lot of people in the community. Yes. Yeah, you're dead right, mate. I think um, for me, I find that not everyone's going to be a professional athlete. We're not all gifted in that sense, but it gives you the opportunity to make sport your living and, and live out your passion and feel like you're not working. and. Uh, you just sort of go out there and uh, you can be involved in making people's lives better through sport and through bringing the community together in that way. And I think if anyone that wants to work in sport, my biggest tip to them would be volunteer as much as you possibly can. Um, committees, coaching roles, um, anything you can possibly get your hands on because volunteering will get you the contacts and the experience that you need. Yeah, speaking from my own experience, obviously I was a volunteer at Port Adelaide in the, in the community department for a, for a year or so. And then obviously I ended up being able to get my job with Port Adelaide so it's amazing where those kinds of things can take you so do you mind uh, telling us what exactly your role is at Bowls SA, uh, Bowls Australia sorry and what, what you do? Yeah mate so basically my role I'm charged with the responsibility of bringing uh, up the participation and membership data here in, uh, in South Australia so basically focusing on all the clubs in SA I have 216 clubs in my jurisdiction uh, we look after everything from business planning, strap planning, right through to participation programs and also local school programs, active aging programs, social programs. So overall, my job is basically to build sport and increase participation of bowls in SA. Um, and I also work out of the Bowls SA office uh, and work directly with the CEO and the other staff here at Bowls SA just to help them with anything they might need, a bit of social media, uh, liaise between Bowls Australia and Bowls SA and I've also spent a lot of time working uh, assisting with governments with school programs and things of the sort. Yeah, fa fantastic. Um, what are some things that you've achieved in your time here at Bowls Australia so far? Yeah, mate, look, obviously uh, early doors, only seven months in, so a lot of things are sort of probably more building blocks to build upon in hopefully post-COVID-19 um, period. Um, but so far, I've been able to increase junior participation by quite uh, quite significant numbers. So in turn four of last year, we had five schools taking our sporting schools program on. 
Um, and this term, just recently term one, I've been able to build that to 13 schools across SA running now. So obviously almost three times the amount of schools this term, which has been a really big uh, jump for us. And over 1,500 kids playing the sport uh, for a four-week program through the Sporting Schools program, which is really exciting for our sport. Uh, and I've also been able to be part of a lot of activations. So across term four last year alone, I saw over 2,000 kids for bowls clinics. Um, and we also did an activation for a week at the Adelaide International Tennis Tournament. So we were able to set that up as well as getting out to the country regions and setting up some bowls in the pub and other sort of activations to get people playing and sort of bringing bowls to the people. Um, and then I guess from an active aging space, which is something else I work on, being the Roll Up the Clock program, which is sort of an over 65s fitness program that I run, which is out of bowls clubs, they have half an hour of exercise, half an hour of education around wellness topics. And they sort of build friendships and they can get themselves more agile and a bit fitter um, in that age group where they potentially don't do enough exercise. Uh, people over 65 are generally, say, to 25% of them who hit their 30 minutes a day. So we're trying to address that gap as well as address the social isolation that comes with people that might have retired or, you know, their family might have moved away from that program. So we've got two programs started up here in term one of, of uh, this year and we've got nine programs ready to go for later in the year once all the COVID's over. So we're... Uh, they're hitting big gains there, and I think for me, the biggest thing that I've been able to achieve is the relationship with the club and the relationship with the Yeah, it was um, really interesting to hear about sporting schools because um, sporting schools, for those of you who don't know, is a, it's a government initiative which provides you know over a hundred million dollars uh, of funding to schools so that they can you know get sporting equipment, get a coach from an organisation to come in. Um, so to go from five to 13 is a, a big jump. And personally, uh, from my experiences at Babington SA, you know, we jumped from 11 schools in 2018 to 32 schools in 2019. So it's obviously great to hear that the sporting schools fundings, you know, giving some exposure to those less commonly played sports in Australia. They obviously got cricket, AFL, netball, which are all massive, um, but it's good. I suppose the the lesser the lesser known sports are, are getting that extra extra boost that they need. Um, are there any particular things that you're looking to implement in the next one to two years here at Bowls Australia? Uh, obviously, after uh, COVID nineteen uh, nicks off. Yeah, hopefully it's uh, not here for too long, of course. But yeah, so one hundred percent, mate. The junior space is probably the biggest one that we're looking to implement upon. Um, especially the sporting schools growth. So something that we're working on with Bowls to say is, is making a bit of a hybrid. They've got a really great program uh, called Get Bowled Over that happens in Clubland. And then we have our junior Jack Attack program in schools. And uh, something that we really drive the, the messaging in Bowls is that it's a sport for everyone, no matter what sort of size or shape you are or ability or whether you've played sport or not before. So everyone's on an equal playing field. So being able to showcase that Bowls, where it's traditionally seen as potentially an older person's sport uh, by the by the vast majority of Australians is um, actually trying to showcase that it's a sport for everyone. It's a sport for life. It's probably our biggest thing. Uh, we're about halfway through our Bowls Unleashed strategic plan at the moment. So 2022, that is due for another review. And the mission of Bowls Australia in that strategic plan is for all Australians, no matter what age, to have a meaningful engagement with Bowls at some point in their lifetime. So obviously that shows for us, whether that's our active aging program for over 65s or your regular penance, or whether that's social bowls with your mates, or whether that's something that we do through the school. So that's probably our biggest thing that we're trying to implement at the moment. Um, and as part of that strategic plan, we look after areas of innovation in our business models. So part of that side of things is being ahead of the curve and being um, a sport of choice for people and also a bit of a sport that showcases what we can do. Um, and also working with our associations here in SA to become more of sort of a sub-branch of Bowls SA, so to speak. Uh, to help with that governance models. Uh, and then uh, I guess giving people better fan experience. So we've got the Bowl Show, which on 7-2 now. It's moved from SBS this year. Uh, and we've also got the Bowls Premier League, which happens on Fox Sports. So every time that comes around, we've got over 20 hours of live Bowls on Fox Sports uh, for people to watch. So it's really exciting to showcase Bowls as a bit more fun and exciting than potentially people have seen before. Yeah, obviously it sounds like some really cool things are, are happening at Bowls Australia. Um, how is COVID-19 affecting you personally? your role and how's it affecting the sport as a whole at the moment? Yeah, look, I guess uh, personally speaking, uh, nothing's really affected our role too much just yet. I mean, there is expectation that potentially our workload could drop down quite significantly in that period. Um, I guess the sport as a whole though, uh, we're lucky in a sense that for most of the Southern States especially, all of their seasons pretty much finished. So we, 
We missed a couple of grand finals here in SA, but for the most part, we played pretty much the whole season. So the effect uh, hasn't really been felt as such as hard as it might have been uh, maybe even in New South Wales or Queensland with a lot of the closures and their sort of movies, their pen season this time of year, it's a bit warmer. So there's something where they are probably feeling that effect a little bit more. Uh, but from a broader sense, the Bowls SA um, clubs, generally speaking, a lot of the members actually migrate north to the warmth, so to speak, in winter and a bit of the grey nomad movement, so to speak. And a lot of those, uh, a lot of those people aren't going to be going to those small towns and to those areas around Australia now. So the broader tourism impact of this is actually going to be felt quite hard by a lot of those areas outside of Bowl specifically. Um, and obviously the virus is for us is, is really difficult because it does affect our core age demographic uh, predominantly as, as the most high risk category. So for us, it's um, the biggest challenge is getting concise uh, feedback and communication and advice to uh, our 832 affiliated clubs that we've got across Australia. So wow. for us, it's getting trying to compile everything that comes out that could possibly have anything to do with them and try and try that balance between not bombarding but giving all the right information so they can make the decisions they need to make. So our biggest challenges at the moment being um, our AGMs being held, uh, as well as trying to stop our bowlers from getting out on the greens and playing and getting out of their house because we want to keep them safe, being our core demographic. And um, the challenge has been that obviously we, we are uh, hoping not to lose any bowlers through this pandemic in SA, um, but it might be inevitable that some, something that uh, might happen. Um. So, Jimmy, with COVID-19 uh, being a very serious issue around the world at the moment, what are some of the opportunities um, that could come out of COVID-19? You know, a lot of people are, you know, using technology to, to work from home at the moment. A lot of people are using Zoom to connect with other people. Um, I'll be using Zoom a lot for some of the interviews that I'll be doing on the show. So what are some of the opportunities for, for Bowls Australia during this tough time? Yeah, mate, absolutely. Uh, look, obviously, as you noted, it is a pretty tough time worldwide and uh, there's not a lot of positives to take out of it sometimes. Um, but, I mean, for us as a sport of bowlers, we're really excited about what these opportunities bring to us. Uh, so first and foremost, it, it, uh, we do worry a lot about the social isolation of our membership and our playing group um, and a lot of the people that potentially aren't working um, or working from home or being isolated. So for us, it gives us an opportunity to educate our clubs on uh, usage, usage of Zoom and other platforms to better connect with their members and also working with our clubs to ensure that they check on members via technology. Um, it also gives our clubs a really good uh, space as community venues to offer their venue for whatever they might see fit in doing so. And, I mean, a number of our clubs are actually using their kitchen facilities to make takeaway services for small towns that have had everything else shut down. And uh, we've even had a couple of clubs mention that they're using their kitchen and a few members are actually cooking meals for the elderly and doing contactless delivery for those people to keep them in their homes so they don't have to go out, which is, um, which is obviously a really beneficial thing in showing the community spirit aspect that comes out of this sort of virus. Um, and for us, I guess, now, it also gives us, from a national point of view, so to speak, gives us an opportunity to get some clear air and some space where we can actually uh, work with our associations to streamline our processes as well. So as we discussed on before, getting some of our associations to sub-branches, so to speak, the Bowls SA and Bowls Australia and those governance models, being able to use this time for business planning, strategic planning and other sort of areas of that nature. Um, and it's also really good for us to be able to uh, streamline our events and things of the sort where a lot of our events are sort of expenditure and then recuperation um, so for us it's able to streamline what we do offer and um, we are aware that this virus whilst it might not impact us right now it could be something that does affect us um, in terms of affiliation and events moving forward it may not we have the funding to be able to do things maybe 12 to 18 months before we even start to get back to some kind of normality and back to our core services so it enables us yeah, to streamline those processes as a sport um, I guess moving forward from a participation side of things for us, uh, with more people returning to the workforce and I guess less money and less time uh, out there, people are going to be looking for any opportunity to be physically active. And we have a club in every council boundary of Australia right now, which is obviously a really exciting thing for our sport. So anyone that's looking for any kind of physical activity might be attracted to the sport of bowls. And uh, for us, a big challenge that we find with our clubs is the notion of uh, well this is how we've always done it so to speak and trying to showcase that it's not always just about pen and membership whilst it's very important anyone that holds a lawn bowl is a bowler and treating them as such so for us it presents the opportunity to have a lot of social programs and with less structured competitions from affiliation point of view and uh, from health concerns 
we might be able to showcase our club as a bit of a community meeting facility and they might be able to have a bit more of a social aspect to them uh, and generate the revenue that we might lose through this period. Yeah, cool. Thanks for that insight, Jimmy. Um, personally, what are plans for yourself in 2020 um, and obviously beyond? Yeah, absolutely. So 2020 for me um, is going to be a bit more downtime than potentially the previous couple of years of obviously working to get into this position. So for us, we're working pretty hard to try and make sure the sport of bowls is, uh, is ready to be relaunched and revamped. So instead of just coming out this to the other side, we're working on strategies and ways that we can streamline and then boost into the new year as um, a new look sport. So for me, uh, 2020 is about working as part of the team and doing my role for Bowls Australia to make that happen, first and foremost. And then from a personal perspective, I've uh, recently enrolled to study a Masters um, or MBA in Sports Management through Torrin Duty. So for me, I'll be using this downtime to be able to get ahead in those um, pursuits academically. And as an organisation, we're using this uh, opportunity to actually showcase uh, to our clubs and our members what we do for them, but also um, we're using this personally to actually do a lot of professional development. So that's probably my plans for 2020. I guess medium to long term, I'm not sure where my path's going to take me just yet, whether that's management or whether that's still participation areas, which is uh, where I like to be. Um, but I guess long term, my goals are to work somewhere in the uh, participation space for disadvantaged youth or people with disabilities getting and playing the sport. Uh, and I guess for us, it's an opportunity for to showcase bowls as that hiking sport for those people in the meantime. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much for joining us on Sports Isolated this afternoon. Jimmy, thank you so much for your company. You've provided us a great insight into the sport of bowls in Australia and in South Australia as well. So if you like this video, uh, please chuck a like on YouTube, share it with your friends, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also listen to our podcast on SoundCloud. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video.